Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. U.S. markets, they retreated quite a fair bit there on Friday down at the bottom end of their scale today, uh, around about uh, next potential support at 17.034. Some poor data out of China this morning. Their PMI figures came in at 49.7 uh, and the dollars taking a little bit of a back seat as well um, with gold spiking higher and crude actually having a good day there on Friday but it's come down a couple of percentage points this morning so US markets uh, looking a little bit tired as we discussed before this is looking increasingly like a, like a descending triangle formation a break of 17,034 would be significant for the US there in the short term opening up a move much lower towards 16,000 so looking at the UK 100, a uh, very negative start for the UK 100, uh, bearish engulfing pattern, uh, down a fair, fair bit this morning first thing. Uh, actually, the UK market is down particularly hard this morning, uh, with the next potential support at 6686. Um, that is quite a bad technical technical sign. Um, the MACD is almost crossing over. Uh, almost everything else is showing negative from that, from that perspective. So uh, we're looking at 6686, the next potential support on there. And uh, as you'll be able to see, Japan 225, um, negative session there on Friday. Uh, matter of fact, the UK 100's candle looks a lot like Friday's candle. Um, and we are looking at a potential uh, support there at 17,496. Uh, uh, dollar yen drifting a little bit lower, actually. Obviously, people buying up yen as a safe haven in the back of a little bit of uncertainty and if we actually have a look at that dollar yen position you can see that we had broken through that potential support which had been in a consolidated phase for quite a number of sessions so that's actually kind of significant that we broke down below that's actually at 116 spot um is 75 so that's a, a decent break now it has moved into positive territory but um the, the dollar does seem a little bit weaker just now people are, are looking more for safe havens today uh on the back of that that weak data from from china and a little bit of uncertainty over greece as well so west texas crude short squeeze apparently there on friday uh, as the uh, dollar began to lose momentum um this isn't necessarily uh, a whole bunch of oil refiners as well have just gone on, on to strike um so this isn't seen seen necessarily is something too significant but it's one of the biggest moves to the upside that we've seen for for some time but there's not been any fall through this morning in fact crude's down about 1.42 percent already um but i had a monster day there on friday uh, to recover a lot of what, what was lost it had been sitting around about 44 went all the way up to about almost 48 dollars so that gives you an, uh, an idea of the significance of that move um but it does feel a little bit transitory some analysts think in the crude oil texas that this is it the bomb has been has been met uh, but I don't know if you can say that after just one one day short squeeze as people start to take some of their short positions off the table. It might be just an excuse for them to reintegrate those again. So then moving on to gold. Uh, gold had a great day there on Friday. Safe haven status back in uh, back in uh, vogue and obviously dollar weakness. Uh, surprising. Uh, well, it was the US GDP figures on, on Friday that, that really um, shook the, the, the world markets and that's why the dollar's a little bit on the back foot uh, and why safe havens are, are back in play. Um, the European market is not quite so heavily hit because of quantitative easing, uh, but the US definitely looking a little bit shaky this morning. Um, so gold probably eyeing up another move towards that $1,300 level. It's not quite there yet. Um, and it's just, just stopped dead in its tracks. So we did have almost a, a bullish engulfing pattern right there, but it's not followed through. Technicals are actually negative, uh, but that's not surprising after uh, on Thursday's FOMC data causing that move to the downside. But uh, with GDP figures quite weak, it would be interesting to see uh, if the FOMC are quite so bullish uh, after seeing those bits of data coming through. And Euro dollar is now floating around about that one spot 1324 level. Um, not like the euro is looking that strong, but the dollar is definitely taking a bit of a bag seat because people already have been pricing in this whole idea about the US rate hike uh, sooner rather than later. It's looking less likely with every bit of weak macro data at the US. Um, it probably will still have a little bit of, of weakness to, to come through because the, the Eurozone obviously is in, is in the toilet and you do have quantitative easing. The program's just kicking off. So um, I'm not sure if we're ever going to get back up to 1 spot 1642 anytime soon, which is the next potential resistance. So um, the most obvious path is towards 1 spot 0786, but it's, uh, it's not going there without a fight. And the US is, uh, is not following through with its pledge of being a stronger economy. So finishing up with GBP USD. Uh, floating around two, two levels, looking a little bit 
uh, kind of heavy down this end. Still, one spot 48.13 is a longer term potential support, with one spot 51.85 as a potential resistance. Economic data wise, it's a whole day of PMI. You've got German PMI, Eurozone PMI, UK PMI, and uh, US PMI. Uh, all expected to come in at, de at decent levels, apart from this one right here, which uh, 39.5, that's not a great level, incidentally. But make sure you've got reoccurring alerts set on those. Uh, and China is already disappointed. Uh, they were expecting something over 50 actually, and it didn't didn't come in, uh, came in below 50. That's actually showing a contraction if it's below 50. So that's a very weak number from China. Fast forwarding on to Tuesday, you've got uh, the UK housing index, and you can finish up with uh, domestic and auto industry sales in the US. And let's move on to Wednesday. Loads of more PMI data um, coming out for uh, the eurozone uh, and everything else. And then we finish up with uh, ADP private payrolls because it is, uh, is uh, non-farms this Friday. And uh, then you do have uh, weekly petroleum sales due later on in the day. So a fair amount of information coming out on Wednesday. And that's all leading up for non-farm payrolls on Friday. And as ever, keep your eye on the channel forum. Make insights part of later going forward. And join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.